If I have something in my mind and something I want to get, blinders come out, everything else disappears, everybody disappears, all consequence disappears, and maybe that's a little bit of my weakness, but that's the only way I know how to be. I remember my mom saying, she says, you came out angry. I came out angry. Following the Monster Energy Cup in late October, racers have just over two months to prepare for the first round of the Supercross season on January 4th. Anaheim, buddy, why are we here? In the 250 class, there is an East and West Coast Championship consisting of nine rounds each. In the Premier 450 class, there will be 17 rounds crisscrossing the United States with only one weekend off from the months of January to early May. It's a sport, but it's also a lifestyle. There's no real end to the season. There's no real end to training. There's no real end to the risk of injury. It's endless. In the last episode of Supercross, Behind the Dream, Ryan Villapoto suffered a concussion and hairline wrist fracture at the Monster Energy Cup. And Jordan Smith's hopes for turning pro in 2014 were cut short with a broken femur. As a parent, you don't want to believe it, you know? You just don't want to believe that that happened. Oh! It's In this episode, Dean Wilson begins his final campaign to win a 250 class championship. And in the Premier 450 class, rookies like Ken Roxon and Will Hahn join veterans Ryan Dungey, Chad Reed, and James Stewart in the war to end Villapoto's streak of three straight Supercross championships. It's not 10 years ago. These guys today were going out. It's 100% effort. I mean, you got to be firing every Saturday night. You can't afford to have a snow night. There's quite a few guys that will be crazy fast and really strong. The top 10 are all people who have won races and championships. Their work ethic's incredible. All those kids, they didn't get there just for their talent. They've given everything in their life to do this. 18 different exercises. Uh, some of these you've done, some of these haven't. Each one's gonna be for a minute, okay? 2014 will be the most important season of Dean Wilson's career. After failing to win a 250 Supercross championship the last four years, Wilson has one more year to win a title and prove he is worthy of a factory racing contract in the 450 class. Come on, that number one plate's way worth all this pain. Way worth all this pain, let's go. In order to achieve his goal, he has placed himself in the hands of Ryan Hughes, an ex-pro nicknamed Rhino, whose career is best exemplified by the day he lost a championship when his chain broke, a corner away from the finish line. And he proceeded to push his bike uphill to the finish in a losing effort. My philosophy is what you give is what you get. Give your life to the sport. I see so many guys only give half. And so, where is the satisfaction when you're done? Breathe before you have to, so you're not playing catch up. Get into the rhythm. Don't think about the pain, feel the pain. He is crazy, like let's just be honest, but I think we're all crazy. The thing I really liked about Rhino is that I would be his main rider, his main focus when he trains me, and Breathe. I just feel like I can tell Rhino things, not have to hold anything back, and I can just be honest with him. Let's go, be clean. Every mistake is a crash. Every mistake is a crash. Wilson was regarded as one of the top up and coming 250 racers in the world when he entered the seventh round of the 2012 250 Supercross West Coast Championship, holding the points lead. But the mistakes he made that night would kill his hopes at a title and change his public image. I was just riding aggressive and trying to win the race and I definitely got over aggressive at times with Eli, but I know he's aggressive as well. Right to the inside. I wasn't really trying to ride to take somebody out. I did make aggressive passes, but I didn't ride like I was going to kill somebody. Sometimes I just get sick of getting pushed around, and I was one of those guys during even my amateur years that I was a little more of a nice guy. I felt like I lost a lot of fans from it. They just tweeted stuff like, 
you deserve that and I hope next time he breaks your legs and pretty cruel mean things like that but I did end up with two bad years and a bad shoulder Although Dean was unsuccessful in clinching a championship, a privateer team under the supervision of former Supercross champion Jeff Ward offered Dean support to race in the 450 class. But two months before the 2013 season opener... Educates you. You can't believe what everybody says. There were rumors that the team wasn't doing well. And me personally, I went to the manager, man to man, you might say, and they told me, no, Andy, we have the money Aside for Dean, and Dean is good. We would never think about signing him and not having the money. And kapoof. At that time in Dean's career was such a terrible thing to do. He just won a championship. He got that ride, so everything else was shut down for him to go elsewhere. Even today, I don't forgive them. I had to just reevaluate myself and see what I wanted to do. I said, all right, I wanted to win the Supercross Lights Championship. I was thinking, hopefully Mitch will take me back. After I have a relationship with somebody, I believe in him. We would like to see Dean win a Supercross championship. He supplied us an outdoor championship. He can win again, and he will win again. Mitch Payton, founding owner of Pro Circuit, the most successful team in 250 Supercross, re-signed Wilson for 2013. And Wilson repaid him by winning the opening round of the East Coast Championship Series in Dallas. But Dean was unable to complete the season after a crash in Indianapolis, which left him with a collapsed lung, broken rib, broken shoulder, and broken back. But when you have life kick you in the butt a few times, well, if you're intelligent, you look back in the mirror and go, okay, what do I need to change? Come on, get in your game! Not start pointing fingers about, oh, it's the bike, it's the team, it's that rider, it's my luck. So I think this has all happened for a good reason. We just have to be patient and let it happen. Come on, you gotta want it. If I'm not running up front with the top guys and winning races and doing what I want to do, probably what everybody expects me to do, that's a big question mark for me. I really don't even know where I would be because I'm such a gamble. Their goal is to be on a 450. And the only way you're going to be a future 450 rider is be successful in Supercross. He has to win. This CBS Sports Spectacular, Supercross behind me. We saw other children, teenagers. The meth thing started. That was the last thing we wanted. There's no direction out there. A lot of those kids are just lost out in the farming community. And we wanted a good direction. And we built a track out, back of the house. It was our babysitter. Carl and Amy Hahn taught their sons Tom and Will how to run a farm and race dirt bikes on their 2,500 acres in Belpre, Kansas. Tom raced professionally for eight years before retiring at 26, and Will is currently preparing for his rookie season in the 450 Supercross class. For the families and racers who arrive at a Supercross starting gate, reflection on the journey always bears the question on whether the cost outweighs the rewards. My grandpa loved it because it kept us out of trouble. All that stuff kept us really focused. It was pretty tough to lose him at a race. It was really close to my grandpa. Came to watch a race and was killed in a car wreck. And he loved everything about it. And without him, I don't think we could have gone as far as we went. No. Han's opportunity to race a factory-built 450 machine in the premier class has only come after two years in which he suffered nine broken bones and because of the loyalty of his team, Geico Honda, through those two years. I don't know why they stuck behind me after 2012, or 2011 even. That year, I, I truly felt that I was gonna win that title. No doubt in my mind. At the opener, second round of practice, I barely tucked the front end of the corner. Land on my head just right and I compressed some vertebrae. I burst fractured like two vertebrae in my back. You have to disguise the look on your face so that they don't see the terror in your eyes when you see the backboard come out and you know it is bad. We went to the hospital. Seeing my dad cry for the first time was pretty tough for me because I'm like, am I that bad? Am I that bad off? I'd never really seen dad like that. It just rips you apart to see your son and that kind of state. 2011 would prove to be the most physically painful year of Will's life. Before the year was over, he would break his shoulder blade, collarbone, 
and several more vertebrae in his back. To start all over again. One more mountain to climb, and then maybe. And the odds every time are less and less that you're going to be able to achieve it. It was something that was really low for me, and I'd spent like two months on my dirt bike out of that whole year. When you start something at three years old and you've done it your whole life, it's something that you love more than anything. No different than if you lost a family member. Everyone goes, man, how do you get addicted to pain pills? But when you get that deep into injuries and that many times and you don't have a choice but to take them, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had peed the bed. Don't even know how. I haven't peed the bed since I was two years old. I wasn't sleeping, getting headaches. I was in so much pain I couldn't reach my pain pills because they were too far away. I had to throw things off the couch to hit the walls until they could wake up and help me out of bed. I couldn't get off the couch. I sat at a table and had lunch one day and just burst out you know, crying like I don't know if I want to continue to do it. Like, why do I want to keep doing this to myself? You have to discuss about, are you going to quit? Are you going to continue? And we've heard that before out of Will that mm -hmm. I'm done. One of his injuries when he was 12 or 13, I'm never going to ride again. I'm going to mechanic for Tommy and I'm done. It takes about two weeks, and we're back. I need to ride. The worst thing for me was the people that were around me that we did all the same amount of work that I was putting in. A mechanic, the team, and everyone that was around me, I, like, I really felt like I let them down. That was the hardest thing for me. Like I wanted to back up their choice to sign me. Most teams would have let me go. I would say 90% of them. In 2010, he was running up front. When I was working with him this year, I was like, you remember in 2010? You put yourself out there every week, and then I kind of feel like you just didn't believe in yourself enough to get that deal done. Like, you didn't believe that you deserved it. I said, you've put in several years of injuries. You work harder than anybody I know. You deserve this now. Despite the fact that Will had not completed the season on one of their machines, Geico Honda re-signed him for 2013. Checkered flag awaits. Will Will Hahn get there? He's done it. Yes. He is one. Oh, no, no, no. Will repaid them by reaching the podium in every main event, winning two races, and arriving at the final round in Las Vegas, leading the championship points race by five points over Marvin Muscan. Vegas, last lap of second practice, I ended up crashing. I broke my hand, I went right to the truck, and looked at the team, and I said, it's 15 minutes. I can make 15 minutes of pain. Like, we'll get through it. And I told myself that all the way to the gate and the whole main event. Racing with a broken hand, my biggest fear was that it was going to cause a really bad wreck. So you got to block that out, otherwise you'll just go crazy. Will Hahn is out there making it happen right now. He's in some pain, but this is his shot at winning his first Monster Energy Supercross 250 title. My wife did not see the last three laps of the Vegas race. You don't think about looking at your wife, but I did look over, and I thought she was Throwing up. I didn't know what she was doing. She had her head between her legs. I was praying. Why? Come into the championship! Yes! It's my greatest achievement in my lifetime. Most of all, the Geico Honda team, my mom and dad's here, my brother's here. All you guys back home in Kansas, I love you guys. It's for you. I don't know that he would have had he not gone through that tough spell that he did. And that was a result of suffering and wanting it and watching on the sideline for all those years and just wanting to be that guy and he made it happen. Will just didn't want to be denied. That was just sheer grit, determination, not only that afternoon, but that whole series. Angel Stadium in Anaheim hosts America's pastime. But to another industry, this place symbolizes the beginning of the most prestigious off-road motorcycle championship in the world. From its home underneath a parking lot outside the stadium, 6,500 cubic yards of dirt must be transported and molded into a Supercross track. I think the biggest thing with Supercross is the show aspect to it. Anyone that races a motorcycle, that's their ultimate dream. In Europe, they don't have it over there. They don't have that size of a stadium. It can be filmed live, televised, and I think that's what draws them in from Europe and from all over. The 2014 season opener will be the start of Ken Roxon's rookie season in the premier class, and the culmination of a dream that began when he started watching Supercross on DVDs in Germany at the age of three. 
Roxen is hoping to be the first German Supercross champion in history. But everything also starts in the morning, just get yeah. the ball rolling good. Everybody in Europe dreams to come over here to ride Supercross because such an event here with the fans and I experienced it as a kid and right there and then I knew I got to be there. It definitely is a big risk coming here. The fields are deep here, there's a lot of good riders. In Europe, he was going to have a really, really successful career and win many world championships. Just being at home and in your own environment helps you achieve those goals. I mean, you have to uproot and move to America, move to a new country, but that's also Ken's competitiveness. And he really, truly believes he can win here and be dominant and be like a Carmichael or Villapoda where they are at the top of the sport. That's the thing with him. If he's happy, he's happy yeah. then you're he's good. good yeah. When he's grumpy, and, well, yeah. you and forget it's, about it. Yeah. Roxon has had the advantage of preparing with Ryan Villapoto and his trainer Alden Baker for the past two months. But that advantage came with the price of ending his training relationship with his father. Coming into Anaheim, Ken hadn't spoken with his dad in three months. The whole time I was just hoping that he was going to come. The doorbell rang and he was standing there together with my mechanic Kelly. You could see like the, the weight was lifted off his shoulders a little bit just knowing his dad was back and this is going to be a good weekend. Ken's not going to mess this one up. Will Hahn is among the top up and coming American racers entering the Premier 450 class. While Roxon had the second fastest lap time in the practice sessions at Anaheim, Hahn struggled to break into the top 10. He just started ripping and then you let that mistake beat you down for the rest of the practice. Don't even have a straight face, put a smile on your face, right? Where we're at right now, he's still got a little too much nerves. He still has that little anxiety, feel like maybe he needs to prove himself or something. He has like built up expectations for himself, even when you tell him not to. Every one of these guys do. Top 20 guys are all expect to be on the podium tonight. Without that, they would never make it to this level. Throughout his career, Han's name has rarely been in the preseason discussions regarding the riders expected to win. Very few people expected him to win a 250 Supercross championship last year, and he is now entering a class alongside three of the most successful riders in the history of the sport, Ryan Villapoto, Chad Reed, and James Stewart. I feel like I can run with those guys strictly because the team I have behind me, the year I had last year, and I work hard enough to be one of those guys. I think it's a deep-rooted desire to conquer something that not many people would try or would think it was possible. It's just something inside of them. Big, long, deep breath, relaxing your mind, your body. It goes strictly back to belief. Ryan wouldn't have gotten to where he did without belief. Let these guys know you're not scared and bang it in there. This is your living, too. Our sport is one of the biggest mentally challenging sports in the world. The injuries and being knocked down and going, man, I'm not quite as confident as I was. Even though you're not saying that, your subconscious is. To me, it's just, it comes to just strictly believing in yourself. The quest to be the 2014 Monster Energy Supercross Champion begins right now. I am a champion. I'm one of the guys. All those guys up front have a championship. And I'm one of them now, so. I want to join that top tier list, roll out to Anaheim, and be like, yeah, I'm here, let's do this. And go, Pota will get the whole shot! Ken Roxon right there in second, oh, and it's Josh Grant. Where the hell is he at? Right there? Yeah, about 15, 15th or so. Ah, oh, bro, come on. Will. Almost got landed on by Weimer. Will started the race in 14th and was losing ground to the leaders by running a lap time two seconds off their pace. He just got passed again. Will's just going backwards. Come on, dude. Defending Supercross champion Ryan Villapoto seemed in control out front, but Roxon was matching his speed right behind him. Oh! Guess who's down? Villapoto! Just like a year ago in the heat race earlier tonight! Stewart gets by, Villapoto drops to fifth. Roxon, he's got the lead. The three riders that are directly behind him all have won this championship before. But he's just going to have to not worry about anything that's going on behind him. Because the way that Stewart's closing up on Dungey, the crowd's going to get into this thing real quick. Stewart, he's got Dungey to the crowd's approval. After going by Dungey, 
James Stewart would pass Chad Reed the following lap. He then began to chip away at Roxon's three-second lead. Stewart is coming after it! And you're looking at a rookie versus a two-time champion with 45 wins under his belt. Here comes James again! I definitely dedicate this race to my dad. Love him to death. He just came on Thursday. I didn't know about it. It was a surreal feeling for me. I've been doing this 14 years now. Never won a, a premier class, 450 Supercross. To beat the guys like Villapoto and Reed and Stewart, Dungey, like, oh man, you don't even know. One of the best moments of racing I've ever experienced. Unbelievable. Will Hahn would only advance three positions to 11th throughout the race. The finish will leave him searching for the elements necessary to compete for another championship. He's bound and determined he's going to have a championship on the 452. Right now, I feel like it may happen. I don't know how long it'll take him, but I don't have any reason to doubt it. If there was a boxing match right now, he'd be ready. He ain't going into the ring cold, I'll tell you that. Coming up next, Dean Wilson has failed to win a 250 Supercross championship the past four years. Expected to win, he has teamed up with ex-pro and trainer Ryan Hughes for his final attempt at a 250 title. Somebody has to win. Somebody. Why not us? I'll to tell you that. Dean Wilson suffered a crash three days before beginning his final attempt to win a 250 Supercross championship at Anaheim. He was heavily favored to win this title for the past two years, and future opportunities for himself and his trainer, Ryan Hughes, will depend on whether or not he lives up to the industry's expectations. Make this good, bud. Good, good good Crowds on their feet here tonight. Sold out. We're ready to go. The first main event of 2014. Come on, Nito. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't like to go into a season thinking about the what if and what could and what might. Let's think about what's gonna happen. Somebody has to win. Somebody. Why not us? Anderson picking up where he left off with his heat race. He's got the lead. Seeley's coming after Wilson right there in third, but he's got a lot of company. All of our guys know what I expect this year. I expect them to perform, and if they don't perform, then you'll look at a new team. Battle for third. Osborne wow. doing his best to turn up the pressure on Wilson. He is, dude. Well, I mean, he's all over him. Looks like to me right now, Osborne's got a little more intensity. Ooh, well, yes, he does. How is Osborne faster than him? It's not, he can't be. The guys are pulling away. Look at how much faster the leaders are. They have now gapped Wilson by 11 seconds. Oh, and he cuts inside of him. Osborne's into third around Wilson. Speechless. See how much work he puts in. Every day, train, train, ride, ride, nutrition, everything. This shows how mental this game is. Dean would eventually finish the race in fourth. Although he is only seven points behind in the championship with eight races remaining, Wilson and Hughes will be haunted by the fact that he finished 20 seconds behind race winner Jason Anderson. Hey, like, well, I don't know what. Hey, well, let's keep trying, bud. I'm gonna keep trying. We'll keep working. Okay? I'm behind you 100%. I'm behind you 100%. Okay? Okay, it's not a lack of trying, it's not a lack of effort. All right? See it. I have felt it. I have done it. I've been in your shoes. I know you have more than anybody out here. One thing I can say now is we're not gonna figure it out right now, so we need to all sleep on it. I'll have some ideas and come together on Monday and see what we can do. Okay. You guys ready for some humor? <laughs> you guys ready for some comedy? Yeah. You ready for some I'm putting comedy? putting the comedy channel on. 
This is so crazy. At Ryan Hughes' home the day after Anaheim, Dean and Rhino met to analyze his performance at round one. They have just one week to make the necessary adjustments before round two in Phoenix. Uh, dude, you're going to let him do that to you? No, I, well, I, I don't know if they'll show up. But yeah, but then he, then he stuffs you again? Yeah, yeah. Twice. You let him do that twice to you, dude. Oh! Look at me. Right here, I was, I was, just, I was seeing red. And that's it? That's red for you? Well, he checked up. Dude, cut him in half. Cut him in half. Look at how much faster the leaders are. They have now gapped Wilson by 11 seconds. Everybody has put so much pressure on you about you're expected to win. But Seeley and Anderson have been in the class just as long as you. Yeah. Right? yeah. The only reason that they expect you to win is because you're a national champion. I think that's a little unfair. And so it's up to you to listen to it or just say, Psh whatever and go race your own race i'd say it's both sides it takes two banks to make a river flow yeah maybe dean needed the will that i have the experience i have but i also need dean to be able to have somebody that i can give all this to i have all this information all this willpower all this knowledge all this this want but if i don't have anybody to share it on then what good is it Unlike the top riders who use road cycling as cardio training, mountain biking has been chosen for Dean's program. In Rhino's opinion, the changing terrain, handling skills required, and fluctuating levels of exertion make the exercise more similar to Supercross. I started training riders in 2006. Came across a lot of the top guys just being difficult, you know? It's like they didn't want to work. And now I have somebody that is an open book that'll listen to everything I say, try everything I say, even if I'm wrong, he tries it. My way is outside the box because I found out a lot of the things that I was doing in my career was wrong. On top of mountain bike riding and yoga, Rhino has also changed Dean's diet to food that is all organic and gluten-free. What I got is the Roots R Us. It's got like all the greens in it. I don't even know exactly. I'm not as detailed as Rhino. And I want some bee pollen in that, uh, some hemp oil, some pea protein, and some spirulina. Well, just tell them how I dropped you on the mountain bike, to be honest. There's no lack of trying for Rhino. He gives it a good try, but he's just not naturally talented on the bicycle like I am. Yeah, but see, that was the old Rhino. The new Rhino is a little bit more at ease, so he'll let other people beat him. The master will always let the grasshopper get ahead to build the he confidence. He says this every time. Scottish salmon. Look at that. Oh, Scottish gotta salmon. get you some Scottish salmon. You make fun of the kid, he makes more fun of himself. I've never been around somebody that makes me laugh every single day. You would have to mess up the shot. Fifties up to the early sixties. They had races from city to city on open roads from Liège in Belgium to Rome over the Alps, they would have checkpoints along the road where the rider needed to get a, a cat stamped off. The pub next to where we lived was a place where the motorcycle club met, and when there was a race like that, they would have the checkpoint there. When I was about 10 years old, I remember being on my window upstairs from my bedroom, watching the bikes come through all night, you know, and that was the first thing that uh, caught my attention to bikes. Up until 2012, Team KTM had not won a single Premier Class Supercross race. But after hiring team manager Roger DeCoster in 2011, they have won six 450 Supercross races and a 250 Supercross championship. At round one of the 2014 season, a KTM rider won the 250 main event, and KTM riders finished first and second in the Premier Class main event. It was the most dominant night in KTM Supercross history. One of the greatest riders in the history of this sport, Roger DeCosta, his nickname is The Man, is their team manager. Roger's so successful in racing and as a manager. He doesn't set himself above anyone. He feels like he's as much involved in the team as anyone else, and he puts in so many hours. He does his emails and computer work, and then the whole afternoon he's in the machine shop helping the mechanics work on parts or developing something new for the bike. He's there early in the morning, he's there late at night. He's totally, totally
totally committed to racing and, and to the team. Although many Supercross legends have become team managers after retirement, DeCoster is the only person in the sport who was a multi-time champion as a rider and is now a multi-time champion as a team manager. It may have something to do with the fact that he spends most of his time trying to shave ounces of weight off his machines or improving the efficiency of the many moving parts. When you have been on the top of your sport, everybody treats you like you're a royalty. It's easy to start believing that you have proven what you can do. Now you can take it easy and come in a little bit here and there and give a few words of advice and you're going to be a great manager. And it doesn't work that way. You need to put in the time. It's competitive. You have to do as much or more than the guy that you're competing against. KTM's hope for a first 450 Supercross championship in 2014 rests on premier class rookie Ken Roxon and former champion Ryan Dungey. Dungey has not won a title since he was with Suzuki in 2010. In an effort to remove some of the responsibility and pressure of creating his own training program, for the first time in his career, Dungey hired a performance coach two months before the 2014 season. Where would you make some changes? I can just, just tie everything together more. I'm getting frustrated and I don't need to be. Okay. So. Well, it's a good observation as long as you have a solution on how you're going to get out from being frustrated. Just saying don't be frustrated doesn't solve it. Roll everything. Yeah, that's it. Smoother's better. When you get into the psyche of the way that the brain is wired, the brain is motivated by either fear or pleasure. We have a tendency to gravitate towards the negative. When you have a doubt, when you have a question, you need to always have a solution. When you look at the military, they put themselves in a position where no matter what comes up, they've got an answer for the problem, the solution's already there. If these arms are holding on for dear life, that means there's a gap between that frame and that, those legs every single time. Good news is you're on a factory bike. Bad news is you're on a factory bike. So if you don't grip it, it's gonna ride you. If I don't have to pay somebody to tell me what to do and it's working, then awesome. That's the point, but I feel like there's a little hurdle that I'm, I'm still trying to get across. There's that little bit extra. I can't seem to find it and dig it out of me. And this guy coming on board, hopefully we find the solution. We can win and, and dominate. What we're looking to get to is consistency. You've got to put in the seat time. You've got to eat the food. You've got to put in the sleep. There's so many elements that have to be in place on a daily basis. Every day that that happens, ultimately it seeps into the brain. And that consistency is what really starts to lead into the rider's confidence. When we get to that starting line, there won't be, I hope I can sustain it. We know for a fact what he can do and for how long he can do it, and we expect some very solid results. brings out. I try to push him to ride closer to his ability. Having another good rider on the same bike, I think it's going to help actually Ryan to push himself. Going into the second round of the Monster Energy Supercross Championship in Phoenix, KTM team manager Roger DeCoster's riders Ken Roxon and Ryan Dungey are sitting first and second in the championship respectively. Dungey is a former champion and although Roxon is a rookie, he seems to have all the markings of a contender after winning the opening round. Ken Roxon, the rookie, wins Anaheim! It is now DeCoster's job to advise both of his riders on their machine setup and line choices as they aim to defeat each other. After the finish, you have that left turn and that jump. Yeah. I know, I messed up there. We can go commit a little bit more. Ryan worries more, a lot more than Ken. Ryan is always looking for everything to be perfect. And it's never going to be perfect everywhere. But he always searches for that. And, you know, that's Ryan. That's, that's the way he is. And Ken is a guy that doesn't like to change much. The 450s is a tough class. There's so much more inertia. There's so much more force. There's twice the power going to the rear wheel than the 250. It's like the whole package. You better know what to say to the guys on the team to get better with the bike setup. And then the mental side, just to shut it out of your head if it's not working. You know, I'm not watching Ryan or whoever. If my bike's a little worse, the other guy set their bikes up a little better. On the line, nobody cares. I'm a racer, I know that. And as soon as we're on the gate, it's game on and 
there's never a doubt in my mind that I can do it. Ken's training partner, Ryan Villapoto, is a three-time defending champion and will be Dungy and Roxon's greatest obstacle in their chase for a title. In the Supercross industry, motorcycle manufacturers provide much of the rider's salary and the financial support for the elite teams. Winning races is often the best possible advertisement of a well-made machine to the consumer. If we're not up front, we know we gotta do something. The sport is evolving quick. Every team pushes the next team. But if you're not in that shoving match or trying to be on top of that, you're gonna get left behind. It's kind of like a mechanic. The rider can fall, but the bike can't break. In our business, they refer to that as the zero or the hero. If we win the championship, everything worked out well, and, and we're the hero, and if we come up short, it's the zero. I'd be lying to you if I said it doesn't bother me, only because, you know, I, I pour everything into my riders, but Ryan still has to do the work. It is time to go racing, round number two of Monster no, Energy no. Supercross. Brayton's gonna take the lead away. Tanji's in second. There goes Barshing. Here's Bam Bam. Bam's into the front tire for Dungey. And here comes Roxon on his Red Bull KTM. On lap seven, Dungey solidified a second place position behind Justin Brayton. And Roxon crashed while trying to pass Barsha. Barsha back in front of down goes Kenny. Brayton has never beaten Dungey in the championship series. But Dungey would struggle to pass him while Villapoto was charging through the pack. Last time around, Dungey, your fastest lap, 56-8. Brayton was a 57-3. Dungey needs to go after Brayton and then check out. Dungey has just paced Brayton too long. This is his weakness. It's yeah. a criticism that I have. He doesn't attack well, early enough. And Villapoto, when he gets there, he's not going to wait. He now has the wheel of Dungey. Oh, come on. There it goes. And oh, Dungey has no response. Yeah, Villapoto is on the move. Look at this. Here he is, Villapoto. Dungey's right there also, but hesitant, not as aggressive as Villapoto. And Villapoto claims his 35th career Monster Energy AMA Supercross victory. This is one of the most frustrating races I've watched. On lap 8, he went on the very left in the world, and he made a beautiful pass. And then the next lap, he went back to the It took so long to get into the inside. But he was still way better, man. I know, like, I, I need to do it. Consistency is great, you know, but it's not going to win. Ken is doing pretty much what I expected. I expected him to be in the hunt, and today he got a little too close to Basha, and Ken will figure that out. He will know next time that won't happen. Ryan, I'm frustrated today more because I see what could happen, what can happen, and what he has in him. It is hard, you know, because I know how much homework he does, how much work we do during the week, and when the opportunity is there, you should take it. It took Will Hahn five years to win a 250 Supercross championship and reach the premier 450 class. In his first two races on a 450, he finished 11th and 10th. His future in the sport will depend on whether or not he can learn to go faster on the larger 450 machine. I want to see some intensity. I want to see coming in hot, changing up lines, squaring it up, coming back down. I don't care about lap times as much as I want to see some like good raw intensity in the corners. A brake slide, diving super low as you're going to pass in one. Don't be scared to fail. Within the last five years, there's been a few lights championship riders that go to 450s and really struggle. It's going to take a lot of work, and I don't think he thinks it's going to be easy, but that's not something that he shies away from. Everyone has a purpose in life, and my purpose is racing dirt bikes. My parents at a young age started me at that, and that's what I want to do. I'll continue to do it no matter how hard I get beat down. It's something that I really, truly love. Ryan Dungey has started out his 2014 season with second and third place finishes. But his team manager, Roger DeCoster, believes Ryan should have won in Phoenix and was openly critical of his performance. I am not winning, going to stop giving it to people. 
Phoenix was a race that early on in the race, I would like to make that pass happen quicker on Brayton and could have led us to a win. People ask me a lot about what Roger says and thinks. And yeah, with the mic on, I'm sure you guys heard a lot of stuff, you know, and I don't want him to blow smoke. And if he tells you something's better than it really is, you know, he's kind of lying to you and kind of keeping from you what he thinks. And he knows what I'm capable of. It's nice, thirds and second, that, that's awesome. They're great finishes, you know, but uh, you don't settle for that. Following his fourth place finish at Anaheim, Dean Wilson would have another disappointing fourth place finish at round two in Phoenix. Before he started working with Ryan Hughes this year, Dean had never employed a trainer. Throughout his amateur career and first few seasons as a pro, he relied on his father Andy for support and criticism at the racetrack. You just gotta step back. It is very difficult. You feel butthurt at first because you feel Oh, I've put this much into my son for 10 years, 8 years, and now I've just got to stand back. And then you have to recreate yourself because you're used to working with your boy 24-7. But the love for the sport is great. I still love the sport and I ride. Then when you go into the woods, try to focus on getting that chest up because then it's not on your arms. Because right when you hunch, look over where my weight goes to my arms and now I'm always pushing back. Now when you see him training with Ryan Hughes and how dedicated both of them are to get the maximum out of their time and how they work at the gym and go to the track and they have such a structure. They're way, way above it, any dad's head. Right in the clutch bag today. Yeah, that time he put his mind on Justin, not on yeah, going yeah, fast. Exactly. You know, but what do you think is going to happen with the race? Unfortunately, he's going to have all the pressure on him and he's expected to win. You can be a dad and it's a better relationship because you're not at the track every day saying you should do this or adjusting this and it's much, much better to come home and you can say, well, how was your day? And he'll say, never rode so good, made a few mistakes. Good conversation. Dean's had a bad couple of years. Now he's better on himself to be stronger, safer, more confident. I can see the focus. So now all you can say, what happens, happens. On March 2nd, in the next episode of Supercross Behind the Dream, we will take a look into the lives of Dean's rivals, Jason Anderson and Cole Seeley. Both veterans in the 250 class have seen limited success in the past, but have not been able to contend for a title. Growing up, I was always, I guess you could say, obsessive about things that I do, like skating or BMX, but I never took anything as serious as I did riding. When I turned 17, I actually quit. Just over losing, putting time in, and not getting anything out. My mom actually hated when I wasn't racing. She wanted to see me be successful. Here comes Anderson! Oh. He's right there! He goes right into him! From age six, I wanted to be a champion. I wish I could have been more focused and done the work that I'm doing right now, but I knew it was coming. In order to have absolute freedom to choose personnel and equipment, former Premier 450 class champion Chad Reed has built his own race team. But after several injuries last year, many believe the 31-year-old's time has passed. It's either I'm just not good enough or I'm washed up. I don't know if I'm delusional, but I honestly believe I can still fight for race wins and championships.